Today, this video is based on a paper I wrote during my PhD studies at the University of Utah. My name is Tyler Brand and I'm a current PhD student at the University of Utah. I'm planning to do my dissertation on three sub-disciplines related to logistics and supply chains. Prior to going back to school for my PhD, I was an industrial real estate developer. I helped source and develop a Class A industrial warehouse facility in Southeast Denver, Colorado for a logistics end user. When we look at the planet, lots of changes are happening very quickly. What's missing is a kind of nervous system for us to respond at a social level or an organizational level. Geographic information systems are transforming our world, letting people see through maps and spatial models the whole context differently. I'm not just seeing my whole segment of the supply chain, I'm seeing how it relates to demand and supply. All those things are spatial in my world, so connecting them all together, sorting them out so I can actually see it and talk about it and understand it, that's a big thing. We have to, as a society, learn to do more with less. Picking up that additional 15% or 25% by doing what UPS or FedEx does, routing their trucks better, wow, that saves 25% of fuel and pollution. This is a quote by the founder of Esri, Jack Dangermon. This pretty much sums up the basis for logistics and supply chain geography. The goal of my research would be to incorporate the vast capabilities of geographic information systems and spatial analysis to solve existing problems plaguing logistics and supply chains throughout North America. Themes embedded in this research would be centered around the following areas, logistics, supply chain, transportation, ports, shipping, freight, retail, import, exports, e-commerce, grocery, food delivery, and real estate. COVID-19 brought forth a number of challenges that deeply impacted these domains. Geographic information systems, or GIS, along with spatial analysis would allow businesses and consumers to make better informed decisions on a daily basis. Geographic information systems has developed countless streams of ap applicability to better understand planet Earth as a whole. With GIS, businesses are able to increase profitability via focus growth development. Geospatial analysis is a critical tool for any company. Spatial analysis and GIS have been used to chart transportation and freight through, around the globe. Supply chain blockages, Shanghai and COVID-19, for example, can inform consumers that certain products may eventually command higher prices. Eagerness, to antedate where obstructions in the supply chain are coming from and solve those existing problems are where artificial intelligence and spatial decision support systems can help. These can signal red flags of potential threats and seek interior solutions. Supply chain issues were bulging during COVID-19 shutdown among several causes, including labor deficiencies, changes in demand and structural issues. The COVID-19 lockdowns in China and Russia-Ukraine conflict have recently aggravated issues affecting supply chains and consumer goods, metals, food, chemicals, and commodities. Freight markets have limited exposure to Russia and Ukraine, but global logistics will have to battle with a number of risk factors. These include restrictions to airspace, uncertainty on consumer demand, and ongoing blockages related to China's COVID-19 response. The COVID-19 crisis shed light on a number of vulnerabilities that currently exist within global food supply chains. This led to countless food deficiencies in many areas. Food logistics and supply chains are interconnected throughout the planet. Geographic information systems and artificial intelligence are helping to predict supply chain issues before they arise. Supply chains can be negatively impacted by unhurried shipments, delays along country lines, and poor health of employees. 
FedEx and Walmart were leaders in third-party logistics in the 1970s by launching modifications with their package and retail delivery services when computers first appeared on the scene. The use of data analysis and logistics is not new. These companies have always relied on computers to develop and enhance their network efficiency. Compared to future usage, the early days were a drop in the bucket compared to what future usage would become. Computerization was brought to the doorstep of logistics networks in the 1970s, but 2010 became the gateway to big data within supply chains. The use of big data provides benefits to shippers and outsourced logistics providers. Visibility and transparency streamline factory functions and optimize routing. A branch of geography called logistics and supply chain geography is concerned with the geographical characteristics of the flow and distribution of products, data, and services inside supply chains. It is the investigation of the ways in which geographic elements influence supply chain operations, planning, execution, and optimization. These elements include location, transportation networks, regional features, and environmental considerations. To summarize, the area of logistics and supply chain geography is multidisciplinary, incorporating concepts from environmental science, economics, geography, logistics, and transportation. Its main goal is to comprehend and maximize the flow of goods and services within the confines of space, resulting in supply chain act activities that are more effective and long lasting. What is a supply chain? The supply chain is a network of enterprises, procedures, and other entities that produce and distribute a thing or service. It consists of the businesses, suppliers, and infrastructure needed to assemble and transport goods. A supply chain is a grid made up of all the companies that produce and market a product. Supply chains encompass the journey of raw materials sourced from suppliers to manufacturer generating the goods, ultimately reaching the end user upon product delivery. In general, this process begins with the procurement of raw materials, their refinement into essential parts and components, assembly of these parts into the final product, and subsequent sale to consu consumers. The segment of this chain responsible for transferring the product from the manufacturer to the end user is known as a distribution channel. There are five simple steps in a supply chain that go into making and distributing a product. The planning stage comes first. Based on assessments of supply and demand, the manufacturer calculates how many products it must deliver to customers during the planning phase. Overall, economic factors are taken to, into account during the planning stage, including inflation, employment, and consumer spending. The next stage is sourcing, which is obtaining the components and raw materials required to make the finished goods. Until they are required for the manufacturing process, raw materials must be gathered, processed, shipped, and kept in storage. The stage of the supply chain called manufacturing is when the product is actually made using the materials that were sourced. Testing, packaging, and quality control are all a part of manufacturing. Product goes to the delivery stage after it is manufactured. After being delivered to distribution centers, finished goods are sold to retailers and end users. Products that are sold directly to customers bypass retailers and go straight from distribution centers to customers. Reverse logistics and customer service are the final steps in the supply chain. Customers who receive products during this process might require help using them or troubleshooting problems. They might also have to send back any damaged goods. Now on to logistics. Logistics involves strategizing and overseeing the movement of materials, services, information, and capital within an entity, usually a private sector company while military and governmental bodies also rely on logistical support. Given the widespread geographical presence of many organizations, 
often on an international level. Logistics entails a careful planning and administration of transportation networks and services. To efficiently manage these complex and widely distributed systems, logistics now extensively integrates advanced intelligence and interaction technologies. Many private sector businesses are adopting just-in-time logistics systems as a growing practice. These systems aim to lower expenses and minimize risks linked to material storage by orchestrating deliveries to coincide precisely with their required usage in a production process. Achieving this demands meticulous and effective coordination of shipment timings. The evolution of logistics is undergoing a significant shift due to the transformation in how businesses gather, share, utilize, and assess information. Advancements in computer hardware and software have enabled the handling of vast amounts of geographical data, allowing firms to analyze their activities, impact on costs and profitability more effectively. The deregulated landscape has resulted in decision-making regarding route selection, transportation modes, warehouse placement, and custom distribution that align more closely with classical spatial decision support systems. Some of these theories have even been combined into existing geographical, geographic information system packages. Throughout North America, the rise of third-party logistics, 3PLs, has led to the creation of an industry focused in many aspects on acting as spatial mediators, economically organizing spatial and temporal movements. This period presents numerous opportunities, yet it's worth noting that many transportation analysts and geographic information system for transportation practitioners have not been fully engaged. This absence raises questions ranging from curiosity about their limited involvement to a deeper concern that extends beyond providing incorrect logistics solutions. It is suggested by logistics that several unrelated tasks are synchronized. In 1991, the Council of Logistics Management defined logistics as a process of planning, implementing, and controlling the efficient, effective flow and storage of goods, services, and related information from point of origin to point of consumption for the purpose of conforming to customer requirements. The definition is restricted to companies by the final description. After accounting for all the associate activities that are taken into consideration when making decisions about moving materials, logistics can also be thought of as transportation. Some companies combine all these tasks into one logistics department while other companies divide them up among several departments. The department in charge of logistics at the company is also in charge of formation, commanding, and organizing logistics. Third-party logistics is a term for when a company contracts with an outside party to handle particular logistics tasks. The term business logistics is frequently linked to companies that need to transport large quantities of goods like retail stores or large manufacturers. Nonetheless, logistics are a worry for the service industries as well. Customer service, demand forecasting, documentation flow, interplant movements, inventory management, order processing, packaging, parts and service support, plant and warehouse, site selection, production scheduling, purchasing, return goods, salvage scrap disposal, traffic management and warehouse and distribution center management are all distinct activities or functions that are all included under a business firm's logistics umbrella. Coordinating the planning and completion of these tasks is necessary. In order to save even more money on another component, the logistics manager might choose to pay for more, pay more for one service component. For instance, because airlines handle cargo more carefully than some of their rivals, air freight, a costly mode of transportation, saves money on packaging. Additionally, payment for the goods is received faster because they will be delivered faster. 
Since the 1960s, the idea of business logistics has evolved. The complexity of providing businesses with the suppliers and items they require combined with the globalization of supply chains has resulted in a demand for experts known as supply chain logisticians. Logistics management software and specialized businesses dedicated to logistics have accelerated the movement of resources across the supply chain. These advancements stem from the technical, technological surge during the progressive era and the intricate nature of logistics processes. The process of moving and storing inventory, completed goods, raw materials, and other resources is known as logistics and business. Customer service, demand forecasting, warehousing, material handling, inventory control, order processing, and transportation are just a few of the many parts that make up logistics in a business. For a business, logistics are essential to profitability. It makes it possible for products to be transported, contracts to be fulfilled, and services to be rendered. Along the supply chain, efficient logistics management guarantees flow and can give a benefit over competitors. At every stage of the supply chain, a, company, a company's efficiency increases when its logistics are enhanced. A company can differentiate itself from the competition by knowing how to deliver the right resource at the correct time to the exact place and adding value to the customer while simultaneously reducing expenses and increasing profits. Interruptions can have a wide range of effects on supply chains operations because of their inherent vulnerability to them. Some interferences are anticipated and businesses can build probability management strategies to forecast, evaluate, and alle alleviate them. Nevertheless, erratic disturbances can have disastrous outcomes for the full supply chain. An example of this are black swan events, such as COVID-19. These uncommon events have significant impacts across various societal aspects. Managing risk becomes more challenging in such situations, resulting in fewer advantages from traditional risk improvement approaches. Consequently, supply chain managers need to explore unconventional strategies. Research in supply chain management suggests various flexibility capabilities in restructuring supply chains to enhance their ability to withstand both minor disturbances and major shocks. The primary aim is to create supply chains that can endure unexpected blows and swiftly adapt and improve. Nevertheless, a critical question remains. Do our current preparations and existing comprehension adequately equip us to fully understand and effectively manage extreme events such as the COVID-19 pandemic. For the majority of supply chains globally, the coronavirus pandemic outbreak at the start of 2020 was an uncommon and disastrous occurrence. In 2020, the event that happened in a random way and appeared in currents in various parts of the world because of this, the pandemic revealed numerous new supply chain exposures and produced an uncommon collection of concurrent interferences, which led to extreme instability, such as undulation impacts. Apart from causing disturbances in supply, demand, and logistics organization, Epidemic outbreaks such as the COVID-19 pandemic represent a unique category of supply chain risks. They involve the simultaneous spread of disruption throughout the supply chain, known as the ripple effect, and the propagation of the epi epidemic within the population. The COVID-19 pandemic caused a, significantly, a significant supply chain disturbance, notably with factory closures that affected manufacturing. Chinese companies ceased production and assembly on January 25th and February 3rd, 2020, respectively, aiming to curb the virus's transmission. These actions marked the onset of disruptions. China witnessed a substantial decline in industrial production by 13.5% from 
from January 2020 to February 2020, surpassing the impact felt during both the financial crisis of 2008-2009 and the SARS outbreak of 2002-2003 combined. Ceasing assembly and production had diverse repercussions that disseminated across global supply chains. Primarily, the shutdown of production in China led to shortages of parts, compelling industries in North America and Europe, which heavily depended on Chinese supplies to pause their operations temporarily. Manufacturers in North America and Europe started experiencing these impacts around mid-March 2020 because of extended lead times for supplies transported by sea. The process of resuming production in China was difficult and time consuming. Chinese manufacturers were operating at 50% capacity with 56% of regular staff, according to a survey done by the Institute of Supply Chain Management at the end of February and the beginning of March 2020. Disruptions in their local supply chains made the slow return to full productivity even more difficult as assembly had to wait for suppliers to resume operations. European and North American manufacturers encountered comparable difficulties as the virus expanded into the Western regions. These challenges encompass limitations on worker mobility due to traffic constraints, implementation of safety measures, like maintaining physical distance within factories and a delayed workforce return attributed to infected employees. These combined factors contributed to the deceleration of production recapture. At first, supply chains that de depended primarily on the Chinese were most impacted. Five million global companies are expected to have one or more tier two suppliers in the Wuhan region and 51,000 companies are expected to have one or more tier one suppliers. ISM shows that when US businesses receive orders from China, 62% of them report significant lead times of up to twice as long. Even when providers were able to supply purchases, the COVID-19 epidemic in China and its spread to the rest of the world disrupted the transportation network connecting manufacturers purchasers and consumers. Interferences affected the shipping industry in the air, sea, and road transportation sectors. The suspension of port operations in China on February 11, 2020 caused a major interruption to ocean freight. Seven of the 10 busiest container ports in the world are located in China, according to the UN Conference on Trade and Development and Wuhan, the area of China most affected by the pandemic is home to the largest inland port in the country. Exits from Chinese ports fell by 20% in February 2020. Due to this, shipping companies increased the number of blank sailings, missing individual or entire port chains. Trucking experienced delays when gathering up and dumping off cargo due to the port's shortened operating hours. Production businesses were halted, which suggests that businesses stop allowing deliveries from their providers. This led to an increase in the amount of goods kept in interim storage and more port bottlenecks. Restraints on international travel and the elimination of passenger flights severely affected by air freight by reducing the amount of belly cargo accessible. Road transportation is also impacted by border crossing restrictions and sanitary border measures. This resulted in considerable waits in reaching customers, especially when combined with limited poor operating hours. Due to, all, due to altogether the consequences on various forms of transportation resulted in a decrease in freight, which led to lesser businesses exiting the market. This led to reduced total capacity, which in turn raised shipping costs. The surprisingly large increase in online demand had an impact on reaching end users, stimulating companies that had not allocated enough inventory 
to the online channel and leading to acute shortages and last mile delivery capabilities. Viral suppression measures, which meant new specifications for parceling and contactless last mile delivery exacerbated the negative effect. Food producers lost a lot of money and wasted a lot of food because they could not reach their final consumers. Now on to supply chain and commercial geography. The economy stands on two pillars, trade encompassing the long distance exchange of goods and services and commercial activity involving exchanges at particular markets. Preceding the industrial revolution, trade and commerce operated on a smaller localized scale. However, the contemporary global economy is defined by extensive flows and transactions on a larger scale. Over time and across different regions, trade and commerce have undergone significant transformations. Throughout history, the most robust economies were associated with larger populations, yet these populations were predominantly country and had lower wages. This correlation existed due to the primary wealth derived from agricultural output. Consequently, trade and commerce held peripheral roles in these economies. Transactions have been forced by physical pauses, which is one of the main reasons that the majority of the world's most significant financial hubs are port cities or significant car cargo hubs in the vicinity. Commercial geography is significantly influenced by the evolution of logistics and the configuration of global supply chains. Transportation and logistics differ primarily in that the form, former deals with the movement of people and goods, while the latter concentrates on planning the various elements of this movement, such as scheduling transportation services and packing and stowing goods. Supply chain ownership and management involve a lot of flows, transactions, and information sharing. The management of freight flows in space and time, which have become more complex and extensive with globalization. As a business endeavor, logistics encompasses a variety of duties ranging from labor intensive, loading, packing, and unloading, to information management intensive, order intake, reservation, and scheduling. However, the environment in which logistics services are provided and run has evolved. Due to the realization that transportation and warehousing were not their primary business, more and more companies are subcontracting their freight transport services. In an attempt to save expenses and enhance services, they are lowering the number of transportation providers. Larger portions of the supply chain can now be controlled by numerous transport companies thanks to the growth of the logistics sector. Numerous liaison steps in the transport chain have been eliminated as functional integration has increased. Large logistics operators that control many supply chain segments have emerged thanks to mergers and acquisitions. Since they handled the administration and running of logistics almost entirely on behalf of their clients, they are frequently referred to as third-party logistics providers. Information technology and intermodal integration are two examples of the technology that has contributed to this process. The distribution of freight alters a region's commercial geography by fostering regional incorporation in the global supply chains and affordability. Competitiveness and resource extraction, manufacturing and retailing are all areas of the supply chain where logistical capabilities are frequently linked. Numerous supply chain management, logistics and infrastructure initiatives are currently viewed as top national investment and economic development initiatives by both the public and private sectors. This frequently involves logistics zones connected to rail yards, bars, terminals and other intermodal terminal facilities. E-commerce related changes are also related to logistics. For example, an increase in distribution and warehousing is correlated with a decrease in the retail commercial footprint, but not with the growth of online purchases. The problem of empty movements is a significant geographical 
commercial and logistical aspect of transportation. Regardless of the mode of transportation, the object must typically return to its original location. Should a portion, portion of the transport be conducted empty, meaning no cargo or passengers are transported, the carrier will ultimately be responsible for covering these costs. Short range movements that preclude a variety of backhaul options, regulatory restrictions like cabotage laws or operator jurisdiction and balance flows like international trade and specialized transport equipment carrying only specific type of goods are the main causes of empty movements. The production now on to globalization of supply chains. The production, distribution, and consumption dimensions of global supply chains are characterized by a unique geographic location. Supply chain managers, or at least researchers, looking into the supply chain management frequently overlook this geography, which is at the core of many tracing strategies. The distribution that support the division between ge geography of production and consumption are revealed by this geography in a way that effectively illustrates the organization and formation of outsourcing. There is a noticeable grouping of North American 3PLs around airport terminals and cross-border points of entry, depending on the type of supply chain in the gateway. Because of their extreme elasticity, these companies' locational behavior is likely to adapt to shifts in supply chain and outsourcing practices. The process of outsourcing is widely recognized, especially for its ability to reduce production costs and free up resources for businesses to concentrate on their core skills. Given that outsourcing is associated with complex supply chains and disjointed production systems, its organizational impact on global supply chains is less. Within this framework, an emerging geography of freight distribution underpins global supply chains is based on two interrelated ideas. Firstly, the world economy is a network of places where disparities simulate trade and associated flows. These disparities may be linked to income, standard production factors, technological advancements, and basic natural endowments. The ability to better manage the complexity of dispersed production systems and get over the obstacle of distance is something relatively recent. This emphasizes the second geographic idea, which views global supply chains as a system of friction in which infrastructure, terminals, and mode of transportation all have important physical functions to perform. Despite being a deep-rooted tendency, there is still more to learn about the functional and geographical integration of production, distribution, and consumption that results in the emergence of global production networks. Complex networks involving information flows, commodities, parts, and completed goods have been established necessitating a high degree of logistics and freight distribution command. Strong players have emerged in such an environment, including terminal operators, third-party logistics providers, and maritime shipping companies. They primarily take on the duty of managing the web of flows on behalf of others, staying out of the production and retailing processes directly. Now on to logistics 4.0. We have been moving more and more toward logistics 4.0, a term that comes from industry 4.0 for a while now. The foundation of this new era of logistics is largely digi digitization, or more accurately, the networking of businesses and devices, as well as the automation of business in logistics processes. Logistics 4.0 aims to boost productivity, streamline procedures, and alleviate international supply chains. Threats along the supply chain must be identified and removed right away, especially in hard times like these. The future of logistics will be significantly impacted by a number of issues related to Logistics 4.0, including networking, machine and automation use, and big data. Road traffic will also exhibit the effects of digitization. Autonomous driving will improve traffic flows by reducing bottlenecks while also enhancing road user safety. 
data is an essential component of logistics and its significance grows with data volume. An increasing amount of data can be gathered and shared amongst devices thanks to increasingly sophisticated software and hardware. The logistics companies involved are able to forecast the future and draw conclusions from the past based on the relevant data. By using big data and intelligent market networking, the goal is to calm the supply chain as a whole, foresee and prevent future breakdowns or disturbances, or create backup plans so that the deadlines are still met. Transport routes can be made more efficient by optimizing them with the use of the data. The need for onshoring. Globalization has become the most notable feature of the past few decades in logistics. More and more goods are being transported across all continents and a wide range of locations worldwide are becoming increasingly unified. Globalization was shown its limits with the start of the coronavirus and a counter trend is starting to arise. Supply chains are now more mutually dependent as a result of global integration. In many other parts of the world, supply chain disruptions or discrete failures, especially in China, have resulted in delays and issues. In order to eliminate these needs and increase the region's independence from one another and restore the strength of the supply chains, a stronger provincial concentration is now being pursued. No longer are we isolated. One of the most widely held future scenarios depicts humans coexisting with robots. Even though modern robots are still a long way from what is shown in science fiction films, they're already capable of carrying out basic tasks, which helps us in our professional lives. Currently, commissioning is one application where robots are used to lessen the workload of warehouse employees. They're mostly utilized in consumer good goods, warehouses, and e-commerce. Robots move big freights through the warehouses and gather the goods for incoming orders. They do this by planning the quickest routes in advance, packing consignments quickly, and transporting the goods to the handover point where the next robot takes over. Sensors prevent robots from colliding with people or other robots. Over the year, more and more of these robots will be used for decommissioning, or for commissioning rather. Demand and the capabilities of digital assistance will both continue to rise as a result of the rapidly expanding e-commerce industry. Alternative logistics. In 2024, multi-channel logistics will also be popular. The ease with which supply chains can break down under specific circumstances has been remarkably illustrated in the latest years. Logistics is diversifying in order to reduce this risk. Hence, freight is being moved using any appropriate mode of transportation, including air, rail, water, and road. It is possible to switch to an alternate transport style if a specific mode is not working well. The impediment to the Suez Canal and the consequent Significant disturbance to maritime transportation have brought to light the drawbacks of depending solely on one means of transportation. This also holds true for the present restrictions or gridlock in transportation, such as rail or maritime. In situations like these, having the ability to switch over to road freight fast can mean the difference between delivery delays and supply chain stability. Enough multi-channel logistics are a requirement for this. Eco-friendly logistics. Sustainability will be a major global trend in the upcoming years and decades. Specifically, logistics has the potential to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Since transportation and logistics accounts for 5.5% of CO2 emissions, according to WEF studies, there is an even greater need for action in this area and the development of environment and environmentally friendly logistics solutions going forward. Using electric trucks for last mile deliveries, using bio LNG as fuel for heavy truck long distance transportation, 
or making smaller adjustments like building a fleet of longer, heavier vehicles are just a few ways to accomplish this. Reducing CO2 and other emissions is primarily dependent on fuel selection and the advancement of related technologies. Technologies with a lot of promise for the future of heavy duty transportation include bio LNG. All relevant routes in the major European countries can be readily covered with bio LNG due to the excellent infrastructure of filling stations that currently exist, assuming that the production of bio LNG can keep up with the increasing demand. There will most likely be more supply than demand in three years. Meanwhile, traditional LNG made from natural gas can also be used to refuel LNG trucks. This option already has a lower carbon footprint than diesel. Compressed natural gas or CNG represents another option. It is not yet liquefied in contrast to LNG. Europe has already a well-established network of CNG filling stations with Germany, Northern Italy, and Switzerland leading the way. Additionally, the technology is far more environmentally friendly than conventional drives, reducing CO2 emissions by 20 to 55% when compared to gasoline engines. Future of logistics, consumer expectations. Similar to individual buyers, industrial clients now anticipate receiving shipments at reduced costs that are quicker, more flexible, and transparent. It should come as no surprise that operating models and profitability are suffering throughout this sector. Furthermore, the rate of change for major manufacturing and retail clients might end up being even quicker than for individual end users. Future of logistics, business to business. Expectations for performance and efficiency in the manufacturing sector are higher than ever. Their clients anticipate customized products, a shorter time to market, and a lower percentage of defects. In the end, the outcome might be a lot size of one in which every product is produced in accordance with the requirements of a single end user, a goal that was previously unattainable. The Industrial Internet of Things, IoT, and what some studies refer to as Industry 4.0 are enabling manufacturing companies, whether they produce consumer goods, cars, planes, or industrial equipment, to rethink everything from their supply chain structures to their customer interactions. Future of Logistics, Business to Consumer. Many logistics firms cater to business to consumer clients. Long before many retailers, consumers adopted digital technology and some segments of the industry are still having difficulty keeping up. The market leaders are implementing total retail, an operating model that spans physical stores, mobile apps, and other retail channels. Connected retail, which aims to give customers a smooth brand experience across digital platforms, physical stores, personalized marketing and payment options, all powered by a strong cohesive brand, complements total retail. In most cases, shippers are not a part of a branded retail environment. The majority of private end users are what we refer to as shipper agnostic, meaning they do not mind who delivers their goods as long as they do so affordably, promptly, and with reliability. Most people expect shipping to be free and would prefer more flexibility in terms of when and where they receive their goods. However, they are willing to pay more for extra services like expedited delivery for expensive items. Customers expect to pay the same shipping costs regardless of seasonal capacity constraints faced by the shipper. The only exceptions are surcharges for same day, overnight, or expedited shipping. Dynamic pricing for parcels is also not widely accepted at this time. Future of Logistics Electronic Tasks In the transportation and logistics sector, 90% of industry exports, experts attribute a higher magnitude to data and analytics in the next five years compared to an average of 83% in other industries. The industry has never had greater data available to it. 
There are numerous opportunities here to enhance performance and provide better customer service and LSPs within a digitally integrated value chain can take advantage of much enhanced forecasting the plan routes and adjust capacity as needed. Adding artificial intelligence and machine learning methods to data analytics can result in genuinely dynamic routing. Although there is a lot of promise, the industry has not acted quickly to realize it. In PwC's most recent industry 4.0 survey, only 28% of TNL businesses self-reported as advanced in terms of digitization. A portion of the industry's clientele is already significantly ahead of this. 41% of automakers and 45% of electronic manufacturers consider themselves to be advanced. The largest issue facing logistics and transportation companies is the absence of a digital culture and training. Future of Logistics Robotics. The warehouse has already begun implementing automated solutions and these are becoming more advanced. For instance, automated loading and unloading systems are already on the market, but in the future, it is likely that these will be able to automatically change routes and avoid obstructions. Technological developments in data processing and optics have made it possible to automate tasks that were previously deemed too complex such as loading and unloading trailers at reasonable speeds. Automation might also be used more in package delivery through the use of delivery drones or driverless cars. Google has already begun developing autonomous lockers and the trucking sector is collaborating with OEMs to develop semi-automated truck convoys. More drastic solutions may take some time to materialize but there are already emerging technologies that have the potential to improve driving efficiency. One such technology is augmented reality, which can provide drivers with additional information about their surroundings and any packages that are still in the car. Future of logistics startups. The majority of the most recent arrivals in the logistics industry are startups, and many of them intend to break into the market by utilizing new technologies. As of right now, the majority of them are found in asset light segments of the supply chain like virtual freight forwarders. These asset light or asset less companies use digital technology to match shippers with available capacity or to provide interactive freight rate benchmarking. A large number of these recent freight forwarding players base their services on more flexible pricing. Some allow carriers to place bids on loads, enabling them to reduce their bids to reach capacity. Additionally, they are increasing price transparency and delivering quotes faster. For instance, they are directly linking via API to a large number of carriers and given their customers access to the negotiated rates for each carrier they use, allowing them to compare prices unswervingly. There's also been a surge in last mile delivery startups in recent years. Some of these businesses are leveraging technology to connect delivery needs with available capacity in order to capitalize on the sharing economy. Uber, which at the moment is the biggest crowd sharing platform for passenger transportation, is also keeping an eye on the logistics industry. Uber Rush is providing express services by focusing on online retailers and Uber Cargo van service has been established in Hong Kong. Using a similar strategy, Dolly is another US-based startup that assists customers with local transportation needs by matching them with licensed drivers. Norwegian-based Nimber connects customers who want to ship something a snowboard or manuscript across town or a keyboard across the country with commuters and travelers. Significant instances of market participants working together already exist. For a long time, businesses like FedEx and DHL have collaborated with small, local, and national postal providers. However, as new technologies emerge, teamwork can become far more vibrant. Nevertheless, collaboration is more challenging when there's an accountability, fragmentation, and a lack of consistency. 
every business has its own labeling system. For instance, and some are hesitant to entrust the vital final leg of this trip to a service provider who might not represent their own standards of quality and branding. Furthermore, partnership agreements are the exception rather than the rule, with the exception of the final mile. Consider cargo forwarding. Although the containers are uniformly sized, the packages that fit inside of them are not. Neither of the digital en entries and forms needed to pass customs. Although contract logistics firms frequently do not pool resources with rivals, they do collaborate closely with shippers. It's a common belief in many industries that having more competitors is better for the consumers. Nonetheless, there are significant significant advantages to greater consolidation rather than less in some sectors of the logistics industry. A 10 to 30% increase in efficiency in the EU logistics market, according to one estimate, would save the European industry between 100 billion and 300 billion in costs. By greatly increasing cooperation between businesses and across transport modes through greater standardization, the physical internet could aid in addressing this grand challenge. In order for the physical internet to function in reality, businesses would have to be prepared to collaborate much more than what they do now. Imagine the savings if all 535,000 distribution centers in the US were connected and their physical workflows were standardized for optimal efficiency. Currently, the majority of these standalone operations are owned by various companies. There are numerous other less drastic ways for logistics firms to work together to use their resources more effectively. For instance, by pooling fleets and networks and forming contracts akin to the code sharing practice by airlines or the airlift that postal agencies buy from commercial couriers. For instance, DB recently inked a five-year agreement with U-Ship, an online freight exchange company, to create a platform that would better link shipments and truck drivers. In conclusion, information technology advancements have brought about a transformation in the field of logistics and geography. The availability and volume of logistics-related information has skyrocketed. GIS are ideally suited to interpret, interpret this deluge of information. The shift that has occurred in many countries' political economies is arguably even more significant. Intermodalism and deregulation have produced decision-making that more closely resembles the theories of location and economics. The world in which businesses make all the decisions is no longer ours. These days, partnerships that form a supply chain are increasingly in charge of making decisions. For this to happen, information must be used by chain participants to coordinate their efforts. Once more, GIS can aid in managing these new circumstances by aiding in the interpretation and picturing of models, as well as assisting each actor in comprehending the connections among the various components of the supply chain. The three concepts of geography, GIS, and logistics are naturally related. A prominent logistics text on the revolution in supply chain optimization covers topics like facility location, network design issues, and node arc data models. Important location theories that link location to transportation costs are also covered. Alfred Weber's theory of industrial location, which Edgar Hoover and Melvin Greenhut modified. Put differently, themes that were once confined to the realms of location theory and GIS are now becoming central to business logistics. This year, logistics will be substantially affected by digitization. A great deal of innovation has already begun, has already been put into practice and new technologies will keep coming out, simplifying procedures and increasing the overall stability of the global supply chain. In 2024, the logistics industry as a whole will adapt new benchmarks due to the sustainability megatrend. 
retaining the profitability of logistics companies while striking a balance between logistics and the environment is a challenge. A significant disruption brought about by digitization and climate change will ultimately result in the prosperous emergence of market participants who actively participate in the early adoption of new technologies. The method of my research would be to take a qualitative tactic in which we survey, review, and evaluate different approaches and practices to engage in big data and managing logistical supply chains. As a result, we would make recommendations for improvements. We would also incorporate proposing and testing on real estate data model or series of models, optimizing one or more aspects of supply chain logistics. The two main problems are high transportation costs for logistics companies and the fact that the supply chain that the supply of logistics space in the U.S. is decreasing while not being able to keep up with demand. There's an inherent trade-off between choosing the right location for a warehouse while also decreasing transportation costs. The method of my research would be to leverage big data and route optimization for transportation while also laying out the ideal site selection for industrial warehouse facilities. We will leverage spatial optimization techniques and focus on modeling site selection, routing, land use planning, and location. The method of my research would also take a quantitative tactic with surveying various companies to specifically gather what their largest challenges are within the above areas. Now we have some maps to conclude. This is a map of each country's biggest export category. This is a map of the world's 50th or 50 busiest container shipping ports. As you can see, a lot of them are concentrated in East Asia. This is a map global shipping routes and the world's largest ports. This is a map of the supply chain of a computer. Thank you for following along, and if you have any questions, you can email me at the address attached. Thank you very much for your time, and have a great day.